Hello, I'm Wildcat and I through hiked the Pacific Crest Trail in 2020 and I'm here to talk about the gear that I used for my hike and what I thought about it. So I haven't really done much since I got off trail with my bag. I was using a KS Ultra Light, which is a brainless pack. They do have these metal stays that you can remove. Um, it's a guy named Laurent who makes them and he lives in Japan and he customizes them so he has tons of customizations on his website but it's a little bit confusing. So some of the key things I ordered mine with were little pockets on the shoulders, a removable sit pad so I could just take that out and sit down and have lunch or whatever and put it back and it's sort of like the cushion on your back. I ordered mine with a trash pocket on the bottom and after all this time it's really held up pretty well. I used the, I forget what it's called, LS, L, LT light skin for the bag itself. Not totally waterproof but pretty water resistant. I ended up putting a pack liner in when it got rainy in like Washington but besides that it worked out pretty well. And then X-Pack? I forget. This is the material I used for the hip belt pockets. Hip belt pockets were removable. Shoulder pockets were not, but they were super handy. The bag has a mesh pocket here and it held up better than most. I think it has one little tiny hole, maybe two. It has a roll top, so like you know, clip it here, you can cinch that down, and then this is the top. It's just one simple tube of a backpack, and I am on the lighter side for gear, so it worked out really well. I really liked it. The only thing I would say about a pack that doesn't have a frame is that it sits on your back and it can get stinky. Like you're sweating, walking around, hiking and having it pressed against your back and get really sweaty, really wet, and really smelly. So every three or four stops in towns, I would wash my shoulder straps and the back of it just because it was pungent. I have um, a little hook thing here for where I would put my trekking poles when I was hitching or my ice axe when I was in the Sierras. I think that's it for the backpack itself really love the pack and Laurent was really easy to communicate with. I'm just gonna go through what I've got on the outside of the bag and unpack it. Here I have a Kula cloth. Don't worry, I've washed it since I got off trail. I love these things. Love, love, love. 10 out of 10, P-Rag if you're a girl. On the outside pocket, I kept my spoon. It's a lightweight, long-handled spoon, but it's got this rubber on the outside and so you can really scrape rape out your food bowl. This was the only piece of gear that animals chewed apart. So I was pretty lazy and I cowboy camped almost every night. So I'd lick my spoon at the end of the day. Little bits of food would still be on it. I'd put it next to my back or myself when I was sleeping and I'd wake up and it would have like bite marks in it. So this is like the third one that I've gone through. But I really like this spoon so I'm sticking with it. So next we have my water filtration system. I have a knock. This is a three liter. I used a two liter one more for like when I was in um, the Sierras when there was water everywhere, but I would use it to hold water and filter. Put water in here and then put it on the smart water bottle and with this blue ring and hang it off a tree or just hold it and squeeze it and it would either be a squeeze system, which was a little faster, or if I was like setting up camp but I needed to filter some water, and hang it up and let it do its gravity filtering on its own. So I would just leave it, come back, and have filtered water. So I really like this system. My knock bags held it pretty well. This is my second one that I was on. I got a hole here and they uh, were good about replacing it. So shout out to Knock, C Knock, Knock, whatever this company is actually called. Went through a couple sawyers too. Don't let them freeze overnight and um, take care of them when you're in town. Only back flush them with uh, clean water. I would have two of these and one would be with a normal cap, that's what I would put my normal water in, and then the other one I had a sports cap on and I would use it to back flush this. And then the sports cap, 
I would put my like electrolytes or my energy drink in. And so this backpack, I was able to reach back and grab the bottles while I was walking. And if I wanted my normal water, I would feel for the normal cap, grab it. And if I wanted like electrolytes, I feel for the sports cap and grab it. And then I could use the sports cap again to back flush in town. I would carry two liters of water most of the time and but when I was like in the desert I have a one liter and then a two liter bottle which also fit in these side pockets on this backpack. Here I have a um, homemade like Dyneema pack. Right, Dyneema, yeah. So I ordered a kit from Ripstock by the roll and got to pick my colors and you know sewed it up myself so I learned I have a kind of like seam tape stuff and it held up really well and in this I kept like my deuce of spades toilet paper feminine products I just use tampons um I use black ziploc bags I don't have any with me I don't think but you can order them online and they're just like not see-through bags and that's where I could pack out feminine products toilet paper when I was in the desert and you're not supposed to bury it there. Um, Summer's Eve's wipes were amazing. I kept those too. I actually gave a bunch of them out because I would uh, put them in my resupply boxes. I would give them out to guys and girls. They're great. This was like my bathroom kit. So when I had to go, I would just have it in the front pocket, grab it, and go. Orange, bright orange. I knew exactly which one it was. Also, for me, it helped to have like different color bags. So I would know, okay, orange is this green is this, blah, blah, blah. I did keep hand sanitizer with me. We were going through a pandemic, so I had to carry a face mask and hand sanitizer with me for going into town. And I just like to use this after I would use the bathroom. Like, I touch your, do some spades and touch your food, I don't know. Here were my trekking poles. I used an REI carbon fiber trekking pole. This is actually my third pair. I would not really recommend these. I liked carbon fiber. I never broke. Okay. I did break one of mine. I broke the tip off of one. Um, so I had to make a Frankenstein pole there for a while, but otherwise the pole itself, this REI flash carbon fiber pole, it's great. The handle is garbage. It's not cork. It's this like foam material. And this is what would fall apart. As you can see, I figured out that there's these little holes and I filled my last pair with super glue because that's where it would start falling apart was was there but I kept my straps on and I used the straps I did the trick where I would put my duct tape around my trekking pole and my luco tape and I found that that worked out pretty good except if it's like raining a bunch it's gonna start falling apart so I'd also send myself new bits of Lugo tape in my resupply box and duct tape. And I always like to have a little extra to, to lend out to somebody who needs it. Okay, this is my headlamp. I had a Petzl Tika, the hybrid kind. Um, me, light, it got brighter three times and then you also hold it down and it turns red. Pretty simple, um, red flashing too. What I liked about this headlamp was that it was a hybrid. So I was using the rechargeable battery. So you just plug it in and there's a little light that's red or green for charged. And it seemed to hold a longer charge than batteries did. And I could recharge it with my external charger if it ever died on trail. I also carried extra batteries for my spot device, which I returned. It was just one of those simple spot devices, but it didn't work. <laughs> I would send notifications out and then ask my mom when I was in town if she got it and she would say nope. So it barely worked, but I carried extra batteries for that or for this, but 99% of the time the battery would be fine and I would only have to charge it in town. I was early morning, late night gal because I'm a slow hiker, so if I want to do a 30 mile day it would often be starting in the dark and ending in the dark. So this thing was perfect it's a wonderful headlamp and it has this glow in the dark ring I don't know if I can show you when you turn off your headlamp it has this this glow to it you know you turn it off you put it down 
you need it again and you have to go find it and it's still glowing so i really like that feature as well i had sunglasses pit vipers on the trail i actually really liked them i had gotten lasik right before i started the hike so they're these big wraparound lightweight glasses and I had one of these to keep around my neck. You can see it's been eaten by a mouse <laughs> or something because I just garage sale when I can, but they were really comfortable. I got a lot of comments on them and they were just fun. Pit Viper actually replaced them halfway through the hike because you can see the colors starting to come off. That reflective coating doesn't change how you see through them at all. It came off. I messaged them. They sent me a new pair, so good on them. There's a hiker box with an old pair of pit vipers somewhere in Northern California. <laughs> FYI, everyone. And yeah, I don't have a bunch of complaints about these guys. They were good sunglasses and they protected my eyeballs. I'm gonna go into what's in the bag now. For my cook system. During the pandemic, sometimes it was harder to find fuel. So often I ended up with bigger cans of fuel because I like to cook. Um, so that's, this is what I ended with, whatever. I like a hot meal. I have this, um, what do you call it? Sleeve that I made for my pot. Let's get those out of there. It really fell apart during the hike, but if you can see, I added Velcro to it. So it would like hold on and hold everything in. I lost my lid for my pot. My pot is just a 750 milliliter Tokes pot. If I were to go back and buy something else, I would buy a, a Vargo bot with a handle or maybe something that I could cook with and cold soak with. But this, you know, did the job. Here's a smaller can of fuel, fits right in. I preferred the smaller fuel. I used one of those, um, BRS stoves, the ones that come from China and they're really cheap. I actually went through two of them on the hike because the threading fell apart in the first one. Just, just kind of, you know, what happens with a cheaper stove. The arms are a little wiggly after all the use that I got out of it. You know, I would cook coffee in the morning and then I would cook dinner at night. I got lazy and I stopped cooking, stopped cooking oatmeal. So yeah, I just, it's lightweight, it works. I might go with a pocket rocket next time, but otherwise that was fine. I kept a towel with me and I would use it in town when I showered, even though it was really small, you know, you can at least dry yourself off with it. Um, I would use it to sometimes if I was up to it, wipe myself down at the end of the day, if I was really gross, you know, wring it out a river. Um, sometimes dry off my pot with it. I probably could have used something like half the size. It held up all right. It's got some holes in it, but I liked having a, a camp towel. It was just a little something extra to, to have. Wouldn't have, you know, I would have been fine without it. Here is my sleeping bag, my quilt. It is in a Z-Pax bag, waterproof bag that somebody gave to me. It was lighter than the stuff sack I had it in and I actually preferred using this. It put it in a shape that fit well in my backpack too. I don't think this is even waterproof anymore. It's, I'm the second owner. This is my quilt. It's a Western Mountaineering Versa light and I got it new for the hike. I worked at a backpacking store, so I got a great discount on it. Um, I'm gonna say I'm a, I'm a little disappointed in Western Mountaineering. Their product is awesome, but their customer service really failed me. 200 miles into the PCT, and I was being really gentle with my quilt because I know it's a thinner, lighter material, and it tore along the seams. It just, you know, fell apart. And I have repatched it like three or four times. It, the patches just don't really stick to this material. I've tried to sew it. A bunch of down has fallen out in the process. And 
I've been contacting Western Mountaineering about it, hoping they'd help replace it on trail since it just sort of fell apart so early and they just couldn't get it together. They couldn't, they were like, well, if you send it in, we could repair it in a few weeks. And I'm like, I don't have a few weeks. I'm out, I'm out here and they need a replacement. And they pretty much said in an email, oh, you can use gear patches, which I did. And they don't stick very well to this material. So I hope that Western Mountaineering now can help me out a little bit, but I think maybe I'd go with Catabatic. I really liked the horizontal bath folding. You can, it was really easy to move the down around. I don't like the aligned equipment, like bath folding, you know, it seems to not spread the down out properly. This was my first go to quilt and it's pretty gross, it's, it's pretty used, but it's still, you know, it's been stuffed away for a few weeks, but it's still is lofting out nicely. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't wash it because of the big tear, so it's disgusting, <laughs> or dry it because of that big tear, so I couldn't wash it throughout my whole hike. Gross. It um, has these things in the back that sort of, it's like a corset almost, and so it keeps the bag like, together behind you but you still have your back to your sleeping pad so you're still saving you know material there um it's got two of these straps you can strap it to your sleeping pad with when i first started using a quilt i used these all the time to keep myself warm and then once i started getting a hang of like how to get yourself into a quilt and stay warm in it i stopped using them because i was lazy you're gonna hear a lot of i was lazy things about my gear so it also has a snap at the like neck and a cinch so you can cinch it up tight i was pretty warm in the quilt there were some nights where i was a little on the colder side but the the longer i hiked the more i got used to just being a little cold at night during that time of year sometimes i would crack a hand warmer and keep it you know close to me when i looked at the weather coming out of town and it was gonna be really cold the bag itself i loved western mountaineering not so much in the bottom of it i kept my what brand are they my booties, my down booties, because I get really cold at night, cold hands, cold feet, um, goose feet gear. And I loved these. If I needed camp shoes, I would like put plastic bags over them and walk around. Yeah, there was just something extra and warm to have over my feet at night. And it really like, that space in the bottom of the quilt was just like filled with warm down from these. Um, <laughs> I was sitting crisscross once while cooking and I burned a big hole in them, but these were easy to patch up and the patch stuck really well. So I love these, they're very light and if you just put them at the bottom of your sleeping bag and stuff them with your sleeping bag, it, yeah, 10 out of 10. This was my food bag. Obviously this is a newer one. I threw out my old one. Um, it's the Auspax and you can zip it up. It's, it's basically a giant Ziploc bag. They're cheap, you get two in a, two in a pack. I could fit four or five days of food in here, I, but I overpacked for food and have it sealed up at night and animals, little rodents didn't get in. I was not bothered by bears, never hung my food. Sorry, everyone just slept with it. <laughs> and oftentimes I was too lazy to like seal the thing up. So it just sort of sat open like next to me in my cowboy camp. No real problems. Maybe I got lucky. Yeah, they would start to tear the sides after about 500, say 700 miles. They were easy to replace and they were cheap. What else we have in here? Some gear patches for my quilt. <laughs> um, oh, all right. This is my tent. This is the Z Pax Hexamid. The Hexamid was I never set it up, I'm gonna be honest. I only set it up if it looked like it was gonna rain. The stuff sack is sort of falling apart. Um, the tent itself is in pretty good shape, but I also rarely set it up. <laughs> the guy lines are fraying a bit. It's, it's a light tent and I'm just, I sleep like I'm dead. So when I get to camp, I'm exhausted. I just throw my stuff out in cowboy camp, unless the weather does not allow. This sufficed, if I were to go back, Maybe I would switch to like a big Agnes or something sturdier or drier in Washington or if you start early in the desert because it does get cold and wet and 
the condensation here is pretty bad, but yeah, if you don't set it up, you don't have condensation. So I liked this tent. I liked that it had a separate ground cloth as well, which I will bring out because this is my crown jewel of my year. It was the best decision I made. It is the z Packs bathtub ground tarp poncho. It is a ground tarp, so I could just put it out for cowboy camping. I could put it in my tent and hook it in. It would make that bathtub shape, or when it's raining, I would wear it as a poncho. It fit over me and my backpack and it has a hood and it zipped on the side. So when you wanna keep you and yourself dry, like your core, get, I'll get my arms and legs wet, whatever. And you wanna do, and you have to do a big climb, this is it. It keeps you from sweating. It keeps you dry from the rain. It's the bomb. So that with this tent, it worked for me. Tent stakes, I just have this little thing for it yeah probably extra weight i know my tent stakes i used um msr groundhogs i think next through hike i'll experiment with tent stakes more maybe go for something lighter i used a couple large for like the key points around the tent and then smaller ones for like the parts of the tent that'll just give you extra space i only had one issue or two or three along the trail with like high wind or the ground is really sandy so if you have to set up your tent in those conditions big rocks put your earplugs in for the wind because it's gonna rattle around and just don't worry you're gonna get through you're gonna get through it this was my pack liner just a very basic waterproof liner i got at a hardware store and it had a roll top, but I cut it off because my backpack just rolls anyway. So I only started using this once I got into Washington. And it was just that, you know, my sleeping bag, it's in a waterproof bag and I have a poncho over me, but having that extra water protection didn't hurt. This weighs nothing, worth it. Excuse the sirens. This is my sleeping pad. It's a little on the heavier side for a sleeping pad, but it's the Nemo Tensor. I got the wide version because I sleep on my side and I sprawl out and I roll around. It came with one of them pump sacks. It just made blowing it up every night so much easier. It was so comfortable and it's got that insulation, but it doesn't sound like a bag of chips when you're rolling around in the middle of the night. You're not gonna bother people around you with it. It is so comfortable. Um, I went the route of heavier but more comfortable for sleeping because if you are well rested on trail you're gonna be a stronger hiker and you're just gonna be all around happier and when it comes to completing a through hike i think that's an important part of it so that's that so inside my backpack i don't know if you can see i have these little hooks that hooked on a purse it's a like a little satchel thing. I don't know what to call it. So in here, I kept my permit, my credit cards in a plastic bag. And then when I go to town, you unhook it. Oh, it takes a second. So like, you know where it is when you go to town, it's safe. You're not gonna lose like important stuff on trail. You just wear it around and it's, it just, I loved having it in town. I never lost important things on trail and I owe it to this because I lose stuff a lot. Let's do, let's do clothes now. So let's start with rain shells. These are my rain pants. Um, I think I'd be open to trying a rain skirt next through hike. I say next through hike, like I'm ready to do one, but I'm not. I just got off the PCT. These are the Outdoor Research Heliums. They did their job. Yeah, this is like the third or fourth pair of pants I went through. First it was frog togs, then it was, you know, north faces that I had. Now it's these. And the reason why I went through so many was because I would rip the butt. <laughs> um, frog togs I just ripped like week one because it was raining the entire first week. 
I started in March kind of early and the other time was um, glissading I went over a stick when I was glissading and just ripped my North Face ones to bits so I was a little more careful and I had these for Washington really didn't have them any other time just when it started raining I got them sent out yeah they wet it out after a while but I feel like the breathable material for rain shells just wets out eventually if you want to be super 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 dry if it's gonna rain for like four or five days go get like a plastic rain suit for cheap from Walmart that'll keep you dry you'll sweat in it but it'll keep you dry this is my rain jacket this came with me the whole way it is disgusting it's falling apart I really have to throw it away Columbia out dry I thought it was interesting because it was seam sealed on the outside which held up pretty well but the jacket itself is like falling apart and it wet out eventually but it was great to have for like light rain it was good to have as a windbreaker but if I was out just like trying to do miles all day I was probably sweating and I probably had my poncho on would definitely try a different rain jacket so at night I would put on the Icebreaker 260 Merido Little Base Layer Pants. They were great, but when, you know, you pull them up, you have to hike them up. And uh, after doing that for 2,600 miles, I got a big hole in the side. And all my gear was new when I started. I started with all new gear. It was really interesting to see what fell apart. This was one of them. Might go with Smart Wool next time. I don't know. I did like them though. And I had the top when I started in the desert, but I found out that over time, I would just be too lazy to take off my day clothes when I went to bed and I would just end up putting warmer layers on on top and then once I started hiking in the morning just take off those layers and just already be in my clothes yeah I know it's gross to wear the same clothes for like five or six days in a row but hey man it's through hiking this was my fleece for just like colder weather you sit down for lunch and it's colder out you stop moving around I wear it to bed I wore it in town I love this thing I wore it almost every day throughout the whole through hike at different parts of the day. It's a Columbia fleece. I don't know. It's uh, got no hood. It's just a little zip here. It's still super soft and warm and it lasted really well. I love this thing. Would definitely recommend it. All right, next is on top of that, I would put this you already know what it is. It's the Ghost Whisperer Good Down Jacket. Really lightweight, um, pretty water resistant. This and my sleeping bag are the two down items that I have and they fared pretty well if they got wet because they were both treated with, you know, whatever the water resisting treatment is for down. I know every company does something kind of different. It had pockets, it had a hood. I always had the hood on at night. I really liked it it kept me warm. And then having the rain jacket over it, I was just roasty toasty. Next is what I wore during the day, every day. I had no town clothes, so this was it for almost seven months. Yeah, six and a half months. Some Nike shorts. I loved them. They were super comfortable. They have a built-in like sort of spandexy shorts layer, so it kept me from chafing my thighs. It has a zipper on the butt, which it never really bothered me. Sometimes I was just aware it was there with my backpack sitting on it. It didn't bother me. Cinched up and I like that it has pockets, you know? I could put my phone in here. Not that I would because I have these great hip belt pockets, but it had a pocket nonetheless. I went through a th few pairs of them, not because they got holes, but because I would sit on tree sap. Sometimes I was too lazy to get out my sit pad. This is my shirt that I wore for the entire through hike. Every day. It, I don't even know if it has a brand. I just Googled a cheetah print shirt on Amazon. It's like a stretchy material. I don't know what it is. I got it in the beginning thinking I would wear it for a part of the desert and it hung out for the entire through hike and it has no holes in it. It was like 12, 15 bucks. Um, 
kind of was stinkier than other shirts, kind of held on to stink, <laughs> but I really didn't care. People would spend like $150, $200 on these really nice backpacking shirts and they'd fall apart halfway through and um, mine showed no, no falling apart, no problems. So I was very happy with that. Couldn't have been happier. Um, I had some cheetah print gaiters to match. This was the second pair that I went through on the hike. They just start falling apart where your feet brush up against each other. I really liked having gaiters. They kept rocks out of my shoes. I switched from ultras, which had gator traps on them, to topos once I started getting foot problems with the Vibram sole. I'm still experimenting with shoes. Getting away from a zero drop helped my tendonitis a little bit, but not a lot of it. So before I was putting the gator traps on them and I didn't have these, I noticed more rocks getting in my shoes. So I went back to using gaiters. Inside of these, I have Kurex orthopedic things. They were just recommended to me. Tried them out. They're really good. I've had these shoes for like 500 miles and they're falling apart a little bit here, a little bit here, but topos last pretty long. Here was my hat, just some cheap hat from Amazon. I would wear it when it was cold. I wear it in town because my hair looked gross and when I would go to bed at night, I put it over my eyes and it would be like a night, sh night shade, whatever you call them. Yeah, I love my hat. Love having a hat. Oh, my daytime hat. Where is that? Hold on. I had a hat for the daytime that I wore all day. I think I had a hat on my head all day, whether it was the beanie or this one. And this was just some cheap one that I got from Bucks Lake, California. Ugh. I liked it because it sort of covered the tops of my ears. If I didn't put sunscreen on them or have a hat to cover them, they'd get kind of burnt and gross and flaky. But the hat itself was fine, just a cheapo thing from one of our stops because my other one fell apart. I had a wide brimmed one in the desert with a couple patches on it, but once I got into a more like forested part of the trail, I felt like it was overkill. I used glove liners. Like I said, I'd get really cold at night, so I'd wear them to bed. You know, in the morning when it was cold, I'd start my hike with them, wear them for 10 minutes, take them off. But when it was raining, I had these bad boys, hospital gloves. You get them in a little bit bigger size and I would put them over my glove gloves and they are now 100% waterproof. And this was great for hiking in. Sometimes if it was freezing cold out, I guess, or freezing rain or snow, you know? I mean, you do start to sweat in them a little bit. What I found them really good for, this combo, was when it was cold and you had to set up or take down your camp and or filter water in just like an ice lake or an ice, icy cold river. Um, they weigh nothing, they're disposable, and since it was the pandemic, you could get them in like any town. I had extra, so I had four of these. I mean, they weigh nothing, so, you know, I give two away, or I'd have them as backup in case the other ones broke. Um, a pair of underwear I wore in town like once. <laughs> I used Injinji socks. I used to just do the Injinji liners and put darn tufts over them, but as I started hiking more and more, that was just a lot of socks. So I, now I just use the mid-weight Injinji socks. I would carry two pairs on trail, three up in Washington when it was just piss and rain. I had a headband. I would wear this when it was colder with my headlamp on top just to keep my short hair out of my face since I can't tie it back. And I also would wear it at night over my nose because I would have my jacket up here, you know, my hat over my eyes, and then my nose would get cold. So I had it for my nose. I know it sounds ridiculous and people make fun of me for it, but whatever. I have sock liners that I would wear with my down socks. They were great in another bag that I made from scratch. It's inside out. Um, for a bra, I used a merino wool icebreaker bra. Not too tight, not too loose. You don't want something suffocating you all day. So this was great. Let's be real, I only wore it half the time. 
nobody nobody cares out there little things that i brought along this was like my toiletry bag i got rid of my toothbrush but it was just a half a toothbrush why not and a little thing of toothpaste when it came to electronics i had a pair of headphones with the wire they weren't airpods i used those because i didn't want one extra thing to have to charge when i was in town two was enough so two would be my phone took all my pictures and videos on there and my charging block oh excuse me and my headlamp um 20 000 anchor um after i listened to a lot of music a lot of podcasts a lot of audiobooks almost the whole hike um and this would keep my phone charged for a week and it would die as soon as i you know after a week so it was just what i needed a little quick charge with two ports so i could charge my phone and my block or my block and my headlamp at the same time um one thing for my headlamp and my anchor block and then one thing for my phone I carried a couple sad looking bags of pills. In here I kept a couple day quill, a couple night quill. Again, if these things, if I didn't use them, often you run into people that don't pack these things and I would just gift them, you know. We all gotta look out for each other on trail. And that to me was an important part of community. I have, um, a couple pills for like upset stomach, like nausea. I had a couple for diarrhea. I had a couple water purifying tablets just in case I lost my soya or something. I get migraines, so I kept my migraine medication. Eye drops, because I just got LASIK for the trail. Good choice. Dirty hands and contacts aren't really fun together. It's not impossible. I see a lot of people do glasses and contacts on trail. But for me, I just was ready to get LASIK. A couple band-aids, a couple anti... <laughs> what do you call it? Anti-germ cloths, my goodness. Um, yeah, and again, yeah, just used them on other people as much as I used it on myself. Gear patches, I kept olive oil in these. I'd fill them up in town, hot sauce in one. They were great. You know, you can pop into town and at a restaurant, you'd be like, hey, can you just like fill this with olive oil? Or, you know, you and a couple other people go in on one bottle at the store and split it up. Olive oil was great to add into my dinners. I had a couple with seasonings in it, <laughs> truffle powder and like seasoning salt, chapstick, just normal, a lighter for my cooking stuff. Tiger Balm, started using at the end. Body Glide, if it's hot out though, this is a new one. It'll melt, so I had it in like a separate container because I dropped it, you know, melted, dropped in the sand once. It was great for butt chafe. It happens. It would happen on a day where I was coming out of town and my pack was heavy and it was sort of pushing my butt cheeks together. Yeah, butt chafe is a thing. And then the last thing that I carried with me that I thought was really important was my Swiss Army knife. It had scissors, um, a nail file, a knife, which I used mostly to cut cheese. <gasps> it has a nail clipper on it. So everything was sort of all in one place. That was another thing. It's nice to have things sort of together and you keep them in the same pockets consistently. You know where they are. I had a tweezer, which I used to take out a bee sting, a toothpick, which I literally never used the toothpick. I just used pine needles instead because I lived in the forest. Loved my Swiss Army knife. That's pretty much it. A lot of my gear held up well, and I was pretty satisfied with everything. You talk about gear a lot on trail with the people around you, and um, but I learned a lot from the people around me, and 2020 was a really interesting time to hike. I had a great time. So if you're looking for gear, my advice would be to go on the lighter side with gear gonna thank yourself your feet are gonna thank you your back is gonna thank you but when it comes to packing your fears you're gonna see yourself pack your fears more like when it I always packed extra food because I was afraid of running out of food but don't beat yourself up over something like that because you can always 
share what you have with the people around you. Extra pills, I shared it. Extra food, I shared it. You know, and then in return, people would share stuff with me. And um, it's really just the community out there. Had a good time hiking. Would recommend anyone to do the Pacific Crest Trail. Thank you.